Hey everyone, me Kevin here. The market is being quite weird right now and I'm trying to figure out what's going on because this morning things were kind of rallying a little bit as jobs came in warmer than expected. But here's some of the things that are weird. Jobs came in, well, hotter than expected and the 10-year treasury is plummeting. Bitcoin jumped $500 while at the same time stocks initially reacted pretty happily, especially uh, some momentum stocks and even tech stocks and some recovery stocks. And now some of those are selling off. For example, energy stocks like Enphase were up a good chunk, whereas stocks like Tesla were up as high as 3%. And now some of these are down uh, either to 1% gains or Tesla's, in Tesla's example, down to negative 0.5%. So what happened? Like what kind of fizzled in the day? And what is the signal for the future? Because usually, and this is the fourth thing that's weird, usually profit taking happens at the end of a quarter. So if it's profit taking, then then it's also even more confusing. Like, why would that happen on, uh, you know, on July 2nd instead of on June 30th? So you've got these really weird things. Jobs coming in hotter than expected, leading Bitcoin to jump, but then usually you would expect the tenure to go up and it's going down. Stocks, you kind of would have expected a mixed reaction, but they were really happy at first and now they're selling off. And if it's just people taking profits, then w why? W why would you do that two days after the half of year mark, like you would have done that two days ago. So it's very bizarre, but I've done some research. And I think we've got some answers. Also a quick note, there aren't too many of you, but there are a few of you, a handful of you that uh, we're working with in email. So if you're having a trouble or you had trouble applying your coupon code or something like that, just send an email. Uh, you could reply to your uh, receipt email and Kathy will help you out. So uh, thank you for, for the very many of you who are signing up. Uh, there are just a few emails that we're dealing with and so it's taking slightly longer than expected. All right, so here are the answers that I found uh, so far. Number one, in the jobs report, when you dig into the details, you go into the weeds of the jobs report. Yes, we had 150,000 jobs that got reported, which was larger than my range. It was hotter than I expected. It was you know, about 50,000 more than I thought would have been within the normal reaction range. And I thought I would have seen some kind of little peak in the 10 year bond data. The 10 year bond is sometimes what we use to see, hey, what's going on with people's inflation expectations? expectations. It's used in the inflation break even calculations. Uh, and when I first saw the chart, the chart first did this right here on the right of the screen, it, it jumped up on the first sign of that 850,000 jobs. And this is what I expected. But I didn't expect that it would do this and plummet after that initial spike. So that's really odd. Why? And so digging into it, what did I find? Most jobs are that, that we ended up gaining were lower paying jobs. And these lower paying jobs increase wage inflation more slowly. Even though you might hear of bonuses of people signing up for businesses, average pay, according to the labor report, only went up 10 cents. That is a slower growth rate than what we've been used to. It works out to an annualized growth rate of 3.9%, which is slower than that four to 5% growth rate we've been expecting and been used to in wages. So in other words, even though we had more jobs, they were at lower end jobs and wages grew slower than expected. This could explain why treasury yields are starting to plummet. And you might wonder, wait a minute, why? Like, how does that relate to treasury yields? Well, here's how. It might signal substantial further progress towards the Federal Reserve's tapering efforts, and maybe we might start tapering treasury bonds while at the same time expecting less wage-related inflation. Now, these things actually kind of work a little counter to each other, but how they average out? I'll show you in a moment. So here's how to understand this. If the Fed stops printing as much money, it means less cash is flowing into the markets, less money is being spent on buying treasury bonds, which means generally treasury prices go down, which usually means higher yields, which is kind of the opposite of what, again, we would expect because yields are falling. But, but I made a picture that I think could kind of explain what's going on. So let's jump on over here. So here we go. We have yields, so sort of the yields expectation. And then we have inflation it affects yield expectations right here. Uh, and then we have the buying pressure. And it looks like to me that even though less buying of bonds would create upward pressure 
on treasury bonds because as prices go down, yields go up in bonds. You would expect yields to go up. The only reason these are actually going down more has to be because of lower inflation expectations. And that's because we expect less money to actually end up in the economy. That's the only reason that I could see, and, and I'm sure there could be others, but based on what I'm researching, this is the only thing that makes sense as to why. Uh, and I'm sure there's there's a lot more nuance to it in the back end in terms of what other things are going on, uh, you know, but it's weird. It's weird, and it seems to me like the market saw a big headline number, treasury yields spiked up, read through the report, went, oh my gosh, no, these are just lower end jobs. They're not creating wage inflation as much as they had been. So it's kind of a an inflation inflection point to the downside. So expecting lower inflation. But what does it also mean? It also means we're closer to that substantial for the progress again, where the Fed stops pumping as much money into the stock market. So you get this sort of dual response of treasury yields falling and potentially stocks going, yeah, let's pull back a little bit. Let's be a little less euphoric here. We're about to have less money in the market. And I kind of align this a little bit with what I just dealt with at the airport. There's, I went to an airport restaurant and one of the managers there uh, talked to me and mentioned, here's the thing, what's happening right now, Kevin? We have so much demand at these airports, but we can only hire back about five to six people a day and we need 700 people. Why can we only hire back five to six? Because we have to stagger out fingerprinting and security clearance appointments with COVID restrictions and people have to stand separated and there can only be so many people getting processed at the same time in the particular room and it's a small office because they've never dealt with this kind of hiring surge before. So in other words, we're not necessarily dealing with crappier service at the airports because there's just because there's more demand, but it's also because again, supply of people who are able to work at the airport is being restrained because our normal hiring systems are screwed up right now. Now we still ended up having more job hiring, but just in the example of the airport, this can actually create a little bit of a phenomenon that we've talked about on the channel before, which is when you have a surge in demand and something like travel, people end up not just paying in higher prices, but they end up paying with their time via delays. This is very frustrating. My flight that left LA, was delayed for two hours. I've got, I had plenty of stories on my Instagram. You, you definitely wanna watch my Instagram if you haven't watched yet. Plenty of stories about that on my Instagram. Uh, so two hour delay uh, on a, on a 10.55 PM flight that ended up leaving at like 12.55 PM, which was a total, or sorry, AM, which was totally annoying. Uh, <laughs> but I don't really wanna go into complaining about that. Uh, and then on the way back, we landed and there weren't enough gates available. So they made us wait 40 minutes to get to a gate. It was supposed to be, they're like, oh, we're gonna have to wait 30 minutes for a gate. And then of course that took, that got delayed. And so it took 40 minutes. It's like, ah, oh, okay. Like I'm, I'm seeing what's happening here. And this frustrates people's interest in traveling, potentially reducing their willingness to go back to traveling as much, or maybe they start delaying some trips, which does what again? It delays expectations and potentially lowers profits for companies. So put, and then we've got more, okay? But put that together for a moment. Less wage inflation, less potential spending because things are just growing slower than expected. It's harder to get things reopened. So more broadly, we're seeing, yeah, we're seeing good growth in jobs, but again, lower prices, lower wages than expected, lower wage inflation than expected. And we're still seeing restrained growth while at the same time, or we're not seeing the growth that we're, we, we hopefully expect uh, because of these supply issues of whether it's materials or, or people. But we're also then indicating that maybe the Fed says, hey, Looks like we need to set up to taper a little bit sooner, which also means less money into the stock market. But here's yet another reason, which actually reiterates the others. Slower growth for value. Value stocks were expected to grow two and a half times faster than growth stocks this year. Halfway through the year, we're on par with growth stocks. In other words, value stock earnings are coming in way lower than expected. And so this reiterates the slower growth that we talked about when we used the airport example. So bottom line, 
It looks like we're getting closer to less money being printed and potentially going into the stock market, especially if they taper treasuries instead of tapering mortgage-backed securities first, which ironically, they might do, even though the real estate market is on fire. But maintaining lower rates for the time being is probably going to be pretty consistent. So we're gonna have those lower rates, but we're gonna have less money flowing in the market. At the same time, potentially lower earnings than we expected from value companies, which means value companies could trade, continue to trade sideways or downward. And it potentially means that people are getting frustrated with the reopening. This reopening bubble is like, man, this whole reopening thing isn't as, as fun. You know, the waits are too long. It's too busy. There are too many delays. Let's kind of spread out our spending a little bit again. That again also depresses that boom that was expected for value. Value stocks have already boomed, but the earnings haven't really boomed yet. Yeah, they're going to, but so far they're not booming as much as expected. And the market, especially the stock market, it's all about expectations. And so then when it comes to tech, maybe that explains why tech this morning was initially excited, but now it's kind of like, nah, okay. You know, tech, if we end up seeing lower inflation is happy because generally tech does well because people go to growth, which tends to be where tech is in lower inflationary environments. But, <laughs> if we're going into lower inflationary environments and the Fed at the same time is then going to print less money, then it's kind of like, oh, this is, this is kind of like the worst of both. <laughs> so these, these are, this is the only way I could try to piece together the weirdness that's happening in the market right now. Uh, hopefully it makes sense to you. Let me know what your thoughts are. Link down below or in the comments down below. And folks, we'll see you in the next one.